Welcome back, everybody, to the Dynasty Dingers podcast. It is National Championship Monday. We have UConn playing somebody. No, Doc, you're going to have to fill me in on that in a little bit here. We have a lot to break down today. We're big conversation piece going to be Tommy John. We have another injury today. And then we're going to go over some of the players that have been really helping our fantasy teams. Again, we are Dynasty formats first for the most part. We do a couple redrafts. But Doc, come on in and let me know who UConn is playing tonight. My friend, my brother in Christ, we are talking to a Hoosier here. You're talking to a guy from <laughs> Indiana. Such disrespect, folks. Such disrespect. Playing Purdue. Purdue. Playing okay. Purdue, which, I mean, to be fair, I mean, these, these guys, they have weird names, right? So you don't actually know. Unless it's Indiana University, you don't always remember where they're from. But is Purdue any... Indiana? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, see, again, yeah. there's my ignorance right there. I, well, I didn't know that. We got we got yeah, Purdue, we got Ball State, uh, okay. we got Butler is another good one, uh, IU, which is Indiana, Notre Dame, Notre Dame up north, south end. Uh, we got and there's like a couple other rogue ones too. Uh, anyway, yeah, I'm not not like that into it, but everyone, I'm I'm kind of new to Indiana. I've only been here, you know, about four or five years now. Still, it's decent, and everyone here, I'm trying to convert them to baseball, folks. We have a lot of fields. And we have a lot of white boys who are 5'9", five, 5'10", five, or anything under 6'4". And you're just not going to – it's going to be – no matter what you're doing, it's going to be a tough uphill, uphill battle to the NBA. So just start playing baseball. Be more like Max Clark. We'll have some studs coming out of here. I love that. I love that. Well, and kind of getting us right in to the – I guess the need for baseball player stock. We have – what I'm calling an epidemic. I mean, that's a little unfair. We're still a little too close to COVID to be saying that, but I'm going to say it anyways. An epidemic of Tommy John's pitching injuries. It has been going on throughout conversations all across the fantasy industry, the baseball industry. We sent some things back and forth to each other. I don't want to have a deep, deep conversation about this beyond the fantasy relevance, but I want to start off with the baseball relevance, which is <clears throat> my take is simply that these kids are throwing hard. They're throwing harder at younger ages. They're playing specified sport being baseball only nowadays. All of these things compounded. To me, it's not a surprise. You add the pitch clock, which is a variable. And then you add the fact that COVID in 2020 either ended a lot of seasons, paused a lot of seasons, didn't allow kids to throw. There are so many layers to this. I just, at this point, am shocked with the news of Framber Valdez tonight, you know, be going, being sent back to Houston for imaging. The names just continue to come. How do you feel about this situation? And what are you doing with your dynasty teams in anticipation of maybe more injuries to come? Well, man, now, first of all, I want to preface this by saying, dear listener, we understand everyone's talking about this right now, but we kind of have to, yeah. right? We get, we, we're not going to spend the whole podcast talking about it, but yeah, it's a problem. And I feel like it's almost like such a thing that everyone's got their take on on why it's happening. Hey, guys, let's not be silly about this. Let's just, you know, I'll say, oh, well, the pitch clock, the pitch clock is something where we already have these guys maxing out their velo, their stuff and twisting their arms, all, all kinds of unnatural ways. The pitch clock says, okay, now that you're doing that, do it faster and do it faster. before you're ready to do it. <laughs> yeah, do it when you're uncomfortable even. Uh, you have to, or else you're going to get penalized. So like, and I think most people are agreeing, like people who like, come back and me, Oh no, it's Max Bulo. Like, well, I did just preface that, but anyway, uh, you know, it, 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 we should, I think we're at a point where we have to start helping pitchers any way we can. And so that means to me, like, Oh, does the pitch, is there a chance the pitch clock could have an impact on this? Let's like immediately look for ways to move it, to expand it. I'm sorry. Like it, it, I'd ra I'd rather baseball games take a fraction longer with stars in them. Okay. Now step then the number two is like, okay, the stuff, like how are we going to tell, tell guys, Hey, don't have filthy stuff. Uh, I think that's a question where maybe you can go into this. Um, maybe, yeah, maybe we'll just jump off into this is people are starting to uncover issues starting at the youth level, starting from kids, because I'm hearing that they're having high schoolers blasting past 90 now. Like, you know, I, I was flexing Thomas White doing that the other day. I think it used to be kind of a freakish thing, and that would be <clears throat> make you a prodigy. And even though, like, it, it, just a few years later now, you know, four or five years later after Thomas White was a freshman, 
I think you're having these kids coming in more and more with blasting 90. So cool for five seconds until they blow their arm out. But then they still get the scholarship. You look at, yeah. you know, you look at Lesko, Lesko got blew his arm out and they're like, oh, well, you still throw really fast, really hard. So we're going to pay you anyway for uh, give you a first round draft pick. Well, and I mean, you look at Strider now, Strider had Tommy John in between, I want to say sophomore, junior year at Clemson. So he's already had it once. If he has it twice, now we're in the Walker Bueller, Shohei Otani, uh, Shane McClanahan, you know, bag. And Strider's 25, 26, right? He's an emerging ace. He's an ace, but like an emerging future dominant ace, right? Like four or five year window where we are projecting him to be the guy or a piece of the the puzzle at the top. And now he's presumably going to have an elbow injury that requires surgery yet again. This is a really interesting uh, piece that's been going around the discords, the the group chats, you know, Twitter feeds. Uh, it's a segment, and I want to say it's from The Ringer. The Ringer had an amazing article out. I will probably actually put that in our notes for today. It's a very long article on Tommy John. Impact is quoted. But this small quote was from Dr. James Andrews, right? The, the legend that did a lot of the surgeries has retired now. And he is quoted as saying, these kids are throwing 90 miles per hour their junior year of high school. The ligament itself can't withstand that kind of force. We've learned in our research lab that baseball is a developmental sport. Tommy John ligament matures at about age 26. In high school, the red line where the force go beyond the, te- um, okay, these are very scientific terms, I apologize, tensile properties of the ligament is about 80 miles per hour. 80. So 80. what they're saying, folks, here's, here's the, <laughs> for the meatheads out there like me, uh, your, your arm's not fully ready to rumble till you're 26. And yeah, if, in dude. high school, you should be blasting 80, and that's about it. And in a Louis analysis, uh, he's a Belgian guy. He does he works at STS, Scout the Stat Line with us. He put out an article today. If you want to get into the weeds with this, then you should go check that one out. Uh, like I said, Louis analysis on Twitter. Uh, Scout the Stat Line put it out too. It goes into all this stuff. And yeah, it's just, it, it, it's that's the hardest part. Uh, so that's what I mean. So if it's the, if that's the most difficult thing to address, let's address it uh, at a gra- grassroots level. But what can we do to like kind of, we have to find a band-aid. We have to find something. So, hey, dude, deal with the pitch clock. Give them the tacky stuff back. It's not steroids. Give them the tacky stuff back. Yeah. <laughs> Glasno had this whole video about how it's like, he, as soon as he stopped using the sticky stuff, his arm wasn't the same. He started feeling more pain. Maybe that's him coping and whatever. He's always getting hurt anyway. But dude, I don't care. Like, let the, <laughs> we, we need to keep our starting pitches together. Otherwise, the St. Louis Cardinals will be your World Series champions based on their innings eater, uh, Lance Lynn, Kyle Gibson, Miles My- Mikolas rotation these guys are going to be the only pitchers left in the big leagues yeah come september and there's going to default their way into the championships well the championships i saw something too and again right a lot of conversation is going on about this and in regards to what the japanese pitchers are doing them being allowed to pre-tack their own balls i haven't fact checked it yet i'm going to do a little bit more research this week and and find out some of these answers but i think to your point doc it's if there's a stone let's unturn it Let's find out what we can do. Let's start making some adjustments right now. Let's not just take the traditional baseball approach, which is like, no, we've made our decisions. We are sticking to it. I don't care if they can see that you're wearing red underwear through your your pants. We're sticking to it. And we're going to get to the point where this is an unwatchable product. No matter the variable that was the, you know, the tipping point in the situation. I think at the end of the day, though, parents have to start really paying attention to this. You have to get more to a balanced approach when it's, when it's baseball, I get basketball, I get football. There's an element where you can train these kids and get them ready to go into college and and not have such a negative aspect on their future earning potential, their future health, where it's baseball. James Andrews saying right here, the data and the science has told us like it is not healthy to be throwing that hard. And we have some incredible facilities now that are able to pull higher velocity out of people just anywhere. They could probably pull it out of you and me. We could probably throw 10 miles an hour harder harder after two or three months at a facility like that. And these are children. So hopefully they start at the high school level. You you asked me a question. I never even answered it. How does this affect us in fantasy? Obviously, it's going to result in guys hopping on our IL. But how how do I think maybe we can... Maybe we can, you know, rebuff this or deal with this or fight through it. Well, in dynasties, in a dynasty perspective, I mean, man, it's it's tricky. It depends how deep your league is. 
I think the deeper the league, the more the less you're going to have on the on the wire for free agents and, and waivers. You're going to you know not find a whole lot of starting pitchers out there. Hopefully, you grab some some of these guys that maybe we'll be talking about today. Uh, you know, some of these le- lesser you know flaunted kind of guys. But if those guys are gone, if you are in a deeper league, my strategy would probably be to lean more into your relief pitchers, especially if you have just you know. Uh, you know, the pitcher designation instead of the uh, SPRP slots to fill. If you can just stack, if you can stack relief pitchers and your like, saves and holds league or saves plus holds, whatever, if they're separated, um, especially. But honestly, if you can just, yeah, even if not, even if not, at this point, you just, you kind of need innings. You, you kind of need Ks. You kind of need the stats. You need those ratios to stay down. So I would say try to find some some stellar relief pitchers out there because they are more available. I've got guys like the you know uh, Daniel Hudson and Shelby Miller. I basically got them wherever I wanted them other than maybe our 30 teamer. Yeah. Well, and I'm going to throw some names out there, Doc. Isaiah Campbell for Boston. He's a guy and these are names within deeper dynasty leagues that I'm rostering into the season because I decided to go really really young prospect heavy. So I had to find innings just to fill. Isaiah Campbell Boston, Josh Fleming, Pittsburgh. Uh, Boston has a number of guys that we really like. Cutter Crawford, at this point probably gone, but you know, a couple months, a couple weeks ago was Tyler Wells for Baltimore. Um, again, I'm gonna try to find some of these Boston guys that I, I dude. Really I was like. hyping, I was hyping Graham Ashcraft. Also, Graham? nobody, yep. nobody, nobody was interested. That's not like I was saying make him your top line, front line starter. I was saying, dude, get him for free, basically Volume. at the end of your drafts. Well, yeah, and he was a guy given so many quality stars last year. I had to go check to make sure he wasn't getting blown up already by by your Milwaukee Brewers. Now through two, he's got three strikeouts and uh, no runs and a point five uh, whip. Sorry, I am streaming and, him, so I like to hear okay, that. Okay, okay, uh, yeah. So we got guys, yeah. guys like him. If you you know Brady Singer's off to a hot start, like this maybe now we're getting to medium sized leagues. Uh, maybe they're not there anymore, yeah. but like, but those, that, this is the tier you want to be looking at, right? These guys who are maybe they've shown flashes in the past. And frankly, you might have to get gritty with it. Suck it up. Go with the St. Louis approach. Get go for a Mikolas. He's he's been good before. He's he's had stretches. You know, go for a Kyle Gibson and and, uh, and oh my goodness, that's like you know, close your eyes. Lance Lynn, you never know. <laughs> you never know. That's <laughs> Lance Lynn colon. You never know. That's his autobiography. Well, at this point though, it's volume, right? Like just having even a Lance Lynn on the bench to be able to slide in if you have more, um, more need. Nestor Cortez also pitching nice tonight, a name that was being dropped in a number of leagues. Um, Josh Winkowski, Boston starting pitcher, is a relief pitcher. He's a name. Uh, we just talked before we jumped on today. Jose Siriano for the Angels has been moved to the rotation. You know, these are guys that were seldomly nothing. And now we're talking about them having even slight value because of the injuries. And I just pulled up a list, Doc. This is pretty incredible. Justin Steele, Garrett Cole, Sonny Gray, Walker Buehler, Justin Verlander, Yuri Perez, Shane McClanahan, Brandon Woodruff, Sandy Alcantara, Kodai Singa, uh, Brian Wu, Eduardo Rodriguez, Max Scherzer, Gavin Williams, Jacob DeGrom. That's just one of four categories for pitching injuries. Um, that's what? That's 12 of the top 40? So Jose Siri, uh, Sirianos are going to be guys that you may need. Lance Lynn, guys you may need. All right. Well, we have covered the Tommy John enough. Um, and it's kind of like we said, you know, at the end of the day, it's just our opinion. I think as this season continues, we'll start to see some things change just a little bit. Uh, and hopefully we have some resolution as the years come so that we can really hone in on, on dynasty aspects. But at this point, I think we're both under the volume approach. Next thing we wanted to talk about is just some of the achievements, some of the production around the league. We're going to start off at the minor league level. The Norfolk AAA team for the Baltimore Orioles doc has been absolutely ridiculous. That's the Norfolk Tide. Um, I will check their box score almost every single day, and I'm always just absolutely amazed. I believe they could compete with some of the terrible major league organizations. Do you think that's even remotely possible? I mean, it's baseball, so I don't know. I don't know the depth of their rotation or, I mean, if you're talking about lineup straight up batters. Yeah, dude. I mean, I'd, I'd rather, I'd rather see Kobe Mayo, Kobe Mayo, Jackson holiday, you know, Connor Norby, Heston Kierstad, even, even Stowers, you know, some of these guys, 
uh, you know, I'd like to see them, I think, instead of the Oakland, the Oakland A's. That said, I mean, it's so it's crazy, man. You can rip on the A's. They've been winning some games lately. Yeah. You know, these guys, uh, Will Benson hit a home run just now. He needed it. He was in the slump a little bit there. He was. Um, he was. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, uh, you know, it's I, it's fun to say. But then you look at a guy, you know, White Langford's been doing well. But even then, like he's not blowing us away, per se, just yet. Uh, not not of course he'll hit one home run and like the hype will explode again but um you know just just going to say that even like the number one guy he's not necessarily hitting 300 you know 500 obp he's not just like becoming an all-star immediately so that would be like a jackson holiday kind of ceiling um in terms of like white langford and him are similar so these other guys like norby and and, and mayo and and even Kierstad, who showed some issues getting on base and striking out last year. The major leagues, they are their own thing. They are not exactly to be compared with AAA, in my opinion. But it'd still be it, what you're saying would be a lot of fun to see. It would. And it, I you know it's fun to take shots. I, I think the A's are the easiest uh, to go after. But you raised the great point. It's like K. Povich at AAA for the Tide. Hey, I, I think he could. I think he could pitch at a major league level right now. I don't know how well he could do, but I, I think he's at least a guy to throw out there beyond Povich. You got four other starters. We know that the A's at least are running out, you know, triple a guys to say the least. So there's always those fun little uh, pieces of the equation, but you're right. Like from a batting perspective, you've got Norby, you've got Kirstead, you've got holiday. These are guys that would be starting in most organizations. If there wasn't roadblocks, Stowers is a name I love. I mean, Stowers out of Stanford. He's a kid that needs an opportunity, and he's just blocked. And he's talk- a surfer boy. Yeah, I mean, he looks like a surfer. He's from California. He trade him to the A's. That's going on. You know, get get some uh, hey, some momentum don't put, here. <laughs> don't you put that evil on me, Ricky Bobby? Don't you put that evil on me? I don't even know what they would <laughs> trade him for. Uh, maybe you know, season tickets in Las Vegas. I don't know. Um, okay, continuing in our minor league approach here, the Seattle Mariners. Single A affiliates Ooh. is very, very fun. They have three great names to watch. Actually, four. Cold Emerson off to a hot start with two home runs. Lazaro Montez hitting his first home run this past week. Uh, Ty Pete also broke a uh, first round pick from last year. And Johnny Farmello. Those are four amazing names to toss into the to the single A affiliate lineup. And I'm under the impression I'm going to be watching this box score all year. You love Colt Emerson. Do you have any thoughts on these other guys, Doc? Hey, you better watch. Johnny Famello is going to come down here and break your legs. He's going to break your legs. His name's Johnny Famello. He's got con- – man, I'm going to get shot now. He probably does have a name <laughs> like that. Like, There's definitely some kind of – oh, from Virginia. I know there's mob in Virginia. You know, there's a lot of mob in West Virginia, like Italian mob. It's really weird. I got West Virginia uh, family I married into, so – yeah, it's a little fun fact, Easter egg for our our listeners who may have been dozing off there. Now you got some. Now you got something going on. Uh, I love Colt Emerson. He's got two home runs already. Uh, he's just like this is a kid who came in here and we were, you know, we were already really excited about him. And then he started putting on muscle. You could just see it that this kid was putting on muscle, and it's really unprecedented to, for what he did last year. I mean, unless you think that a 536 batting average, you know, in rookie ball as a 17 year old is like normal. Uh, then, yeah, I went up to A ball and just did almost exactly, he went 302 with a 436 OBP. And he started off this year so far. There's only three games at A, low A. Um, but, dude, he's still, he's crushing it again. Two home runs and he's got great ratios. Farmelo, I, I, I've been hesitant to jump on the far. Okay, listen, obviously I'm a fan of the name, so I'm, I'm, I'm in on that level. It's a 65 grade name at least. But you know, we're seeing six strikeouts here. I'm looking at his numbers to one walk, three game sample size. You know, but still 214 batting average, 267 OBP. If those numbers stay like that for a bit, then you're just gonna. It's not a death knell. He's just gonna have to hang out a bit more. But that's you know. Hitting two home runs in three games, also impressive. So I'm excited. People, there are some guys out there, I, dude. The thing is, we got these guys who who, who I follow: uh, prospect larceny, prospect tilt, and prospect sauce. Hey guys, your names are too similar. I, I get your takes all merged sometimes. <laughs> what, at least one of those guys loves Johnny Farmello, I'm pretty sure. And so, hey, we'll see what happens. It almost doesn't matter if he pans out though, because uh, just yeah, they got they got so many 
such an embarrassment of riches and they really slow ball their prospects and it seems like they just trade them when they're about to come up anyway so i don't really know if this is I, it's it's got to be great for seattle you'd think uh, as a, if you were a mariners fan this has got to be an exciting exciting time to look ahead I, I have a weird franchise isn't it like it feels like the rotation could just be you know this playoff deep playoff kind of gang mm-hmm. but then you look at and their bats uh, I mean, yeah, you're a top five bat in the league, arguably top 10. If you want to, you know, get really controversial with Jose, um, mm-hmm. Rodriguez, Julio, Julio Rodriguez, yeah. excuse me. Mm-hmm. And that's it, right? It's like, it's Julio and you got Montez, you got Emerson, uh, you Cole they're Young. Of, they're kind of, yeah. Cole Young. Cole like, Young. Dude, Cole, right. There's some, there's some Jackson Ford and Cole Young. Yes. I, and they got, I, what, I agree. What's the, Tyler Locklear. Yeah, uh, you got some. Oh, I've got some and, names. And Jonathan Clay, Class A. It's probably yeah. a completely different pronunciation. I don't know if he's going to make it. Anyway, it doesn't even matter though because that's just so much talent. And I, yeah, I'm excited to see who's going to make it, who's going to keep doing well. But you, you know, isn't it weird? Like everyone we're naming here, they're just like slow rolling them all the way to the top. Like I think Locklear is like getting older. It's like, dude, just your bats in the major leagues. Put them up there. I, I, I think they're just a cheap franchise. Yeah, so well, and they, insane. but they, they reach. They go for high school. If you look, Cole Young, high school. Emer- Cole Emerson, high school. Lazaro Montez, uh, international signing, right? Ta- uh, Taj Pete, high school. Johnny Farmello, high school. Um, what is it? Festin, uh, how do I pronounce it, Doc? Uh, Festin, the, the international kid, uh, shortstop, hurt his oh, ankle. Is this hamstring. the. Oh, Selenin Kelly? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Selenin sounds, sounds better. Festin sells correct. I, I butchered it. Those of you that you know want to hate on me for it, I, I apologize. But no, anyone I guess my who point hates is, on you has to say, has to pronounce all the German names too. Schwarber. Yeah. Schweinwetter. Yeah. You, have to, you have to be equally. You have to roll to, into it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I wanted to touch on Farmello real quick. I don't have any back-end data for Farmello. All I can really tell you is his swing looks a little different. Question mark coming out last year is why did Cole Emerson, why did Taj Pete be able to you know get assigned to affiliate ball and start playing, and why did Farmello not? Well, we don't know. I assume they were re- reworking some mechanical things. Maybe there was an injury. Maybe they just wanted to get him up to speed. But when you look at his swing when he was in Seattle on the showcase after the draft and you look at his swing now, it's very different. Uh, it looks very um, Delauder esque. Um, yeah, Delauder, Chase Delauder, right? For the Indians. I can continue yeah. to get him and Dolander for the Rockies confused. Yeah, so, well, those are two different guys. Does, are you saying that for Mello, does he follow through with his so swing? If I haven't you, seen it. So, no, well, you know how Dolander or. Um, Delauder. Delauder, thank you. This is going to be a new problem I have. Um, Dude, I'll, this is our earliest, but just so everyone knows, we're doing this at a crazy time. We're, we usually do this at 9 p.m. Eastern, which is 6 p.m. for Maddie here. And we're we did we doing it about two hours earlier. That's right. I woke uh, up about an hour ago. But that's not okay. an excuse. It's not an excuse. Okay. Oh, that, 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 that explains a little bit for me. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you know how he has, I, I call it the fly swatter, right? Like, he doesn't follow through. He has prodigious power. And you're kind of like, damn, what if he followed through? And it's like, well, when you know the swing that actually doesn't so much matter, it, it's a mechanical point of getting there. So Farmelo is very similar. When you watch his second home run, you're going to see that the bat almost comes to a complete stop as he goes into the follow through. And it's like, that was not his swing just seven months ago. So he's made significant changes and it's very, very fluid. Uh, he does have the strikeouts that you mentioned, but... I love where the swing's at. It doesn't have the hitch it did. So my thought is they probably were working on a Farmelo swing. We need to now see that. And as you said, give him a little time, right? Give him a month or two to really kind of He just like, got out of high school, man. Yeah, he's so, a kid. Yeah. Um, but it's hard when Cold Emerson's out here just dominating. I mean, he has, Cold Emerson has made Cole Young's name kind of seem like the back burner. And Cole Young's a good mm-hmm. baseball player. Mm-hmm. And then you pair him up with the power of Montez, Harry Ford's in this organization. There's a lot to love. We forgot Harry Ford, yeah. I mean, they're 18th on pipeline, organizational ranking. I think that's ridiculous, but we also know how strong sense. the lower affiliates are. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so I, you know, great names to mention. Farmelo, Emerson, uh, Montez, Ty, Ty Pete. Uh, Pete hasn't done anything yet this year, but I do expect to see him kind of morph into a Crawford-esque type player. Okay. Uh, next up on the list, Noah Schultz. Four innings, ten strikeouts. What do you think of Noah Schultz coming off twenty-seven innings last year, Doc? Well, I mean, you know why he had so few innings? 
Uh, I know that there were a few injuries. Do you have any bigger yeah, details? Yeah. Well, I mean, just his last one, I believe, was a forearm strain. It's it wasn't good. good. Um, yeah, so it's like, yeah, I'm a big innings guy. I think it's the most, un- I made a joke earlier, but, um, you know, you, it really is. When you're when you're looking for prospects, you, you need, to, especially when they're prospects and they're electric, uh, some guys it's like, okay, well, we don't really want this guy as a reliever, or if we do, he's going to just be like a middle reliever. But, you know, you, uh, like Drew Thorpe putting out 140 innings last year. I'm like, oh, he's a starter. And everyone immediately says, okay, that's a starter. You, you, you've done it. Uh, Mason Miller, I was I was all get, get, getting very suspicious. I'm like, I don't see it, man. Like, he's not – the innings aren't there. Like, and you're not going to get him there for like two to three more years. You might as well just like make him a reliever now and have him help you out and, ha- and start his career. It's not like it's a penalty to him. Like, here's your major league career. Congratulations. We'll work on – Maybe pushing you out later, you know, uh, you know, stretching you out a bit more. Uh, when it comes to Schultz, he's six foot nine. Uh, there's a lot of moving parts there. I'm, I'm, you know, I haven't been scouting him tremendously. I'm excited about his potential. Listen, I should get that off. I should, I should really get that out there. Noah Schultz, with that frame, as we saw with Yuri Perez, rest in peace. Um, <laughs> you know, you know, these guys, you can leverage that kind of length and height uh, to just really take your game to another level but also that does yeah it usually means like you're, there's more moving parts involved and and frankly yeah you can you can get hurt a little easier maybe but if you had a if there was one reason other than he's just so young and, and so you know he's still in the you know lower minors the, the biggest reason for my concern with him is that he's with the chicago white Sox, and i just don't really trust them to not mess him up i hope that i'm wrong uh, i really do because hey you know, Garrett Crochet and Drew Thorpe and Noah Schultz. That sounds like a lot of fun. And that sounds like something called hope, something that the White Sox haven't had lately. Okay, Doc. So I'm going to tie this back into the dynasty element here. You are, we're going to hypothetically say you were a Noah Schultz owner and you're in a kind of holding pattern. You're not rebuilding per se, but you're also not competing. So in dynasty, that always means you're looking for, you know, assets. But again, you own Noah Schultz. He goes out four innings, 10 Ks with everything you just said. Are you looking to cash in on that value right now? Or are you going to risk it, hold him the rest of the year, hope he continues to go up and hope to use him? Like, is he a trade piece for you or are you building him as a future key piece of your either rotation or bullpen? What did we start this podcast off about? Volume. Pitchers. Volume. Volume. Pit, your volume and but also a pitcher injuries right yes. so yeah and the young guys especially so yeah man I, I think there's tremendous talent i have him as my 80th overall prospect as of you know march 3rd um that's pretty high for a guy who isn't really logging innings because his talent is there and yeah if you can get if you can get a hitter in my top 80 prospects or even top 50 I mean, maybe it, i mean you you could I don't know about one start, but if let him like put together like two or three more starts, maybe get the buzz really going. Of course, you're playing with fire, but I'm, I mean, I also don't think it's too crazy to ask for two or three more starts out of the guy. Hopefully, yeah. you never know these, these days. But I mean, even I'm even looking at the, like the bats after him on my list. You know, like Roderick Arias. I think I'd rather ride with Roderick. It's just like I feel like I'm. <sighs> You can't act like pitchers don't exist. You have to take some shots with your prospects. I think that Noah Schultz is too... I would not go out and acquire Noah Schultz, is what I would say. I would not go out and acquire Noah Schultz because now he's too buzzy. You want to get the pitchers who are not buzzy. Don't pay for pitching if you unless unless it's like looking like... (laughs) Even if it's looking like a sure thing. I thought Andrew Pander was a sure thing. Yeah, you know, there's no such thing as a sure thing anymore, I guess. So yes, to answer your question. I would look to sell him. If no one's biting, though, do not sell him for nothing. Yeah, I don't sell him for nothing. Noah Schultz can be your fantasy ace one day. Two, just three when. Now. Yeah, it's just when. Now. Uh, yeah, I fully agree with you. I'm, I'm looking to move him if I can. And I just I ask because four innings, 10 strikeouts can get a lot of people excited. He's on the list for a reason. Four innings and 10 strikeouts will do that. Frank Mazzucato for the Kansas City Royals had a nice little two or three stretch run last year right before he had his own injury where like his name started flying up boards. Like that's kind of what we're looking for. I think out of Schultz where it's like, if you can get that two or three starts where it's like, Hey, the whole industry is talking sell and sell now. And Mm -hmm. if he ends up being the next Justin Verlander, well, so be it 27 innings in 2023 is not enough to tell us that. 
Uh, okay, transitioning into a little bit more negative note here. We like to stay on the positive side, but we have two really big names from this past FYPD and this past 2023 draft that are not necessarily starting off on the best note for 2024. So Doc, Big question is, are we worried about Dylan Cruz's one for 13, first three games, seven Ks, one walk? Well, as a guy who took flack for not having Dylan Cruz as a top five prospect or like overall, you know, or like I had, I have Brock Wilkin just ahead of him. I think it's like a 16, 17 thing. Um, that's, you know, this is from well, you know, over a month ago now, but still, even then, it's like I, I told people, look, seventeenth overall is still really, really good. Like that's unbelievable for a guy who just got drafted. It's just that we had this, we have this brand name baked into Dylan Cruz already, so it's not exactly fair. He's been like a known prospect for a while. He's been on scouts' radar for quite some time. He was not a pop up like Brock Wilkin, who maybe they were like, ah, oh, he's too raw. Then he got pol- showed some polish. No, Cruz had that polish for a while, so that's why it feels like a disappointment. I'm not too super concerned. I don't really like the Washington Nationals as a developmental organization um, per se, but. You can see that they've, you know, they're getting something out of C.J. Abrams and James Wood. Sure seems, he seems like he's been t- turning a corner. Um, I'm just, you know, we're such a small sample size, man. It's like I'm looking, I'm looking at Brock Wilkins stats here. I was gonna maybe see how he was doing. He's not doing that great. Uh, he's got <laughs> it's six, early. It's early. Yeah, three get, but it's three games, dude. Yeah. If we're call on three games. I'm not worried about it. Uh, he had a great. Sp- it's funny, you know. Well, I guess, it, but I mean, that, that's that, if you want to look for concern with Cruz, it's that he didn't have a good spring training. Spring, <laughs> let's pause here, folks. Spring training, either. Brock Wilkin had a great spring training. Four twelve batting average, five eighty three OBP. You know, he was really showing it. And so when I see that he's off to a slow start in three games in in Double A right now, I'm like, okay, well, I'm not that worried. But when Dylan Cruz has been last year at the end of the year he was underperforming a little bit you you can be like okay it's a long year of college and now pro ball and it's adjustments sure and then you see the spring training where he's not really doing great and then now you're seeing a few games start. that's why i think you're seeing some some you know not about fear but you're seeing some concerns setting in we'll see what we'll see what we where we are even a week from now two weeks and certainly a month you know that'll be very interesting and it just goes to show that prospect development is not linear. Frankly, Dylan Cruz could have a terrible year. He could have an awful season. The whole season could be just, just like, yeah, he's just going to have to be at double A this year and figure it out. Um, and then he could come out next year and make the team out of out of camp. Like, I mean, yeah. you know, like he's, yeah. he's just Great got point. that. He does have the talent. He does have the talent, but um, it's not, he's just not doing it right now. Well, and organizationally, it only helps. I mean, I think the best case scenario is James Wood, Dylan Cruz start the 2025 campaign, and they're both in the running for NL Rookie of the Year, right? For that draft pick compensation, they start together. I looked at Robert Hassel, who has been turning a corner in his prospect pedigree, starting to like rebuild some traction, has had an awful first three games. So it's early. I had talked to you about this in a, in a few of the major league components, I think as an industry, we, we, we tend, I do as well, to forget about the colder environments. It's cold on the East Coast right now. It's cold in the Midwest right now. Like <clears throat> You got to give these kids, some of these kids, a month to really settle in. And I remember that being a, a big issue for Emmanuel Rodriguez last year, where you know he first month, month and a half in Minnesota in the minor league affiliates, it was colder than ice. It was 45 degrees, and you expect this kid to you know have 115 exit velos. It's like it just doesn't work that way sometimes for these young kids. So I like that take on, on Dylan Cruz. Uh, another name to monitor, same same draft class, uh, this one being a high school draft pick. Walker Jenkins banged up a little bit, had a quad hamstring issue dating back to March, uh, is now on the seven-day minor league IL. There was an injury last year as well. Uh, are we worried at all about maybe his long-term health, or is this just nah, something I mean, to monitor? Yeah, I'm just like starting to like look at the Minnesota Twins and – Give him the old squinty eye. I'm like, what's what are you guys doing over there? Is it yeah. too cold? What's going on? Uh, well, I mean, there's no excuse for him unless he's, you know, maybe he was on the road or something. But he's, you know, he plays for Fort Myers. It looks like here down in Florida. So uh, that's their that's their 
low A. So affiliate. we can't even give him the cold no, aspect of this. So, no. uh, let's see how how did he do? Did he, he was he wasn't even really up in spring training or anything. He's too young. So now he came no. in last year. He looked he looked great. Uh, he's a big boy. Sometimes it doesn't matter how big you are. You got the injury bug. I mean, I feel like I think we're bordering on silly if we kind of. If, yeah. if we're looking for a, a trend of injury already, but it is annoying, right? We're like, yeah, we want to see you play. It's like, it's like, it's out of almost out of love that we're having the concern. We're like, come on, you were, you're the, you are the chosen one. There's like 10 <laughs> chosen ones in this draft. There class. really it's are. Great. Yeah. It's great at least. So um, yeah, no, it's just disappointing, but keep an eye on it, man. Cause I, I, I don't know. Like I feel like the only news pieces I've been seeing from Walker Jenkins the last couple of months has been like injury, injury, injury. Thank God, you know, they're not really serious from what I can tell. Hopefully, you never know. Sometimes it's like a quad injury. Like, he's always pulled his quad quad strain. And he's just, like, continually out for a month or two. That that would be unfortunate. So, yeah. And frankly, I guess I guess if you want to look for the actionable kind of in, information, it would be, yeah, just, like, monitor that. And if he is out for a month, I mean, in this level of your development, that's when injuries are so frustrating when, you, when you're a prospect or a dynasty GM because time is everything. And it just what it would do is maybe – set their clock back a bit in terms of when you might expect them. Like like these guys, like Max Clark or Walker Jenkins, these high school kids, or Colt Emerson, you know, if they're just absolutely killing it to the point, eventually they're just going to force their way up through the ranks, but you can't do that if injuries are stunting your development. So yeah. we'll watch out for that. Yeah, great call. And yeah, it was quad and into hamstring. Uh, I don't know if it's same leg, probably same leg. Those things usually tend to, to kind of shake themselves out. And again, young kid, usually... Something that uh, can rebound quicker. We'll from... see if he's stealing though, huh? Because he's already like a big boy. I, that's kind of my thing with Walker Jenkins. Another reason I had Max Clark ahead of him yeah. is because I just don't know, man. Like he's almost, he looks like he's going to be a behemoth and he'll slug a lot of home runs. I just don't know if we're going to keep seeing like this promising yeah. speed play out. I mean, six yeah. stolen bases. Like I'm under the impression a lot of these kids that came out after the draft and were running, it was really just organizationally. It was like, hey, green lights across the board. Like, Let's see what you got. Let's get some times on your runs. Let's let's see what your approach looks like. I don't care if you get thrown out six out of six times. Like we just need to know. And yeah, six three two ten at nineteen years old. This is gonna be his Walker Jenkins age nineteen season. So you know he's still a kid, yeah, and like that's he's messing up his quad down. and his hammy. It doesn't really help. Yeah, yeah. He's, well, and you know, look at Trout. Trout came out this year and said he wants to steal twenty bags again. So uh, ups and downs uh, mm -hmm. depending on where you're at in your career. Uh, last segment for us today, Doc. We're at about the 40-minute mark, so we're making great time today. The big thing for us after about two, two and a half weeks is where are we at with our dynasty teams? There's a number of names that we want to talk about today that either, either excited us, uh, surpassed our expectations, kind of kept us afloat, or just completely fallen on their faces, and we look back at draft season and say, why did we fall for that? So who are some of the guys that you're really enjoying having on your team so far? Uh, Anthony Volpe, ever heard of him? Volpe <laughs> or Volpe? I feel like people. Say I like Volpe. Volpe. I feel like Volpe is very Italian. Hey, Volpe! Yeah, you know, I had an true. You know, you know, I had an Italian friend growing up, and I, it's in the. You know, I grew up in Canada. A bunch of Italians who were my friends there for some reason. We go to uh, Indiana. There's no Italians. Not allowed. <laughs> but in I Canada, I don't, I don't know. But uh, I called uh, the pasta. You know, penne. You know, yeah, I, I said, I said, hey man, like he's like, what kind of pasta do you want for uh, dinner, man? My mom wants to know, and I'm like, uh, do you have any of that penny? You got some chicken penny, maybe? And he was like on the floor crying. I was like, what's wrong? Are you okay? He said, it's penne. <laughs> you mangy cake. You so mangy. You ever heard that before? I have not. No. You can't. You, yeah, if you get an Italian to call you mangy, mangy cake, and so uh, Italians will get that. That basically means you. You're the other kind of white boy. You're not the Italian white boy. You're not the. You're, you're not the kind you're, of white you're, boy. You're, you're, you're. I think it might be like white bread or something. Like just like you know. Oh, and I love big, that. Probably just making fun of British people or something. Uh. Anyway, my guys, I like dude. You know who I like tonight? Graham Ashcraft. Yeah. I was pumping. I was pumping this dude a little bit. Like low key. I wasn't like, hey guys, this is your top pitcher. I said this is a guy you can get for free basically later in the end of your draft, and we're seeing him through four in Milwaukee or not. Not even in Milwaukee, in Cincinnati, which is actually more impressive. That band box, Great American Ballpark. Yeah, he's got five strikeouts through four, no runs, 0.25 whip, 
We'll see if that keeps up. But Volpe has been such a great asset for my dynasty team, which is hilarious. Cause I was like, dude, is he going to be holding me back this year? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I liked a lot of this one team. Uh, he's been great. Gunnar Henderson. It's almost like Gunnar has been almost like, I like almost forget about him. Cause we're just like expecting him to be good. He hasn't been, you know, unbelievable, but just kind of consistently there and in a great lineup. Um, I mean, Yiner Diaz, I've mentioned him, I think, last week. Just an absolute, you know, he's kind of he's, he's kind of turning it on behind the plate. Some of my teams, I feel like I just won my Dynasty Hockey Championship. Congratulations. Uh, so, and but so, yeah, Thank you. Some of these Dynasty baseball teams are off to a slow start. Maybe I'm in the wrong sport. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about here. Um, you know, but no, the guys I, I like, yeah, I mean... Uh, you have it's, another name it, on here, Doc. Spencer Steer, who I think Spencer is probably Steer. Oh, on yeah. the list. We, ha- we have it, folks, just at home. Uh, I'm the. I like to remind our, I like to remind our viewers and listeners that I'm the dumb guy, and Matt's the smart guy. We actually have notes that I'm supposed to be looking at here. <laughs> I'm just like I'm over here, like just like see if I can find more names. Like, like no, nah, those, who, who those are my two. starting first baseman in League Thirty Seven here. Yeah, oh, it's so funny. I'm just like goalie from my but isn't that hockey a, league. Yeah, isn't that, you know, isn't that like dynasty baseballers though? Like we're not comfortable talking about the mainstream guys. We're always trying to find like the next guy. No, no, I don't want to talk about the guys I have on the list. Like MJ Melendez. That's that's been a guy who we've I, been waiting for for a while, right? Like a couple of years. I didn't now. even want I don't even know if I'm still fully in yet, but I'm happy from he's been hitting the ball hard for a while for his whole mm-hmm. career. And so when you do that, that's something you kind of it's harder to teach. So it's good to see the balls dropping. And I believe he was statistically possibly the most unlucky hitter in yeah. the league last year. He was in the in the top echelon of that category you don't want to be in. Um, well, you know, his, the- his savant page is also, is probably going to sound like a moron here, but like it was like inverted. Everything that he you want to see him do right, he does right. But then there's the two categories of like chase and, and walk rate, which were like horrendous. So it's like, yeah, not only does he hit the ball hard, but he also, when he does hit the ball, gets unlucky. And the other problem is him hitting the ball. So it was like, it was all these worlds colliding, kind of that Ellie issue where you're like, if this guy can just figure it out, if he can just make a little bit more contact, maybe change the approach, we could see a really special profile. And I think I'm in your camp right now where it's like, hey, I want to see a little bit more, but I'm definitely excited about MJ Melendez just because I've been waiting so long. And I, and I want to celebrate these players that we have been waiting for and if you know he fizzles out he fizzles out so far he is winning me weeks yeah no and and i've got to say like you know we have listeners who are in the deep deep leagues and we have de- listeners who are going to be in more shallow leagues and maybe some redraft leagues or you know and so if, if melendez is out there on the on the wire and everyone's looking at his past stats and they're a little too scared yep. just take take a flyer man take the flyer there's worse guys out there that you're taking the flyer on right now i'm sure uh, the next name I got here is Spencer Steer, man. Did you try to intro me to Spencer Steer? Like I did. Five minutes ago? I did. Yeah. But we got sidetracked yeah. because Melendez is so awesome. But Steer is one. very good too. Steer is is Steer is such a ridiculous situation that we're in that like I, we have to like, rehype Steer, dude. The guy broke out. Yeah, the guy but broke out. Not everyone nobody, nobody believed in it, right? Like, he, but I mean, I he agree. broke out. He broke out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, let's think of a <clears throat> like. <laughs> I feel like. More people like there's some like Noah Schultz gives you you know four innings in low, <laughs> ten in K's and it's like oh my god and everyone's like he's the guy Johnny Farmello Johnny Farmello <laughs> and you know we got this guy in the big leagues giving us a full season you know in an amazing ballpark an amazing lineup versatile plays every position and you know gave us a top sixty season in some leagues and it's like eh? Still, he's breaking out again. Well, yes, he is. And he's actually even doing even better. Doing better. Than he was doing yeah. last year. So it's early on. But, man, I'm kicking myself because I had him <clears throat> in even more leagues. And it's just insane that, I don't know, man. I, just, uh, I, I got in some deeper dynasties over the summer just so I wouldn't have – I wouldn't be in situations where, like, he would be my last keeper or I'd trade him away. Like, it, there's some some shallow dynasty formats or keeper formats where he just, like, was, like, the last guy for me. I traded him for a pickup grade or something. Um, 
And so I actually have gone out of my way to trade back for him. And and that's something you can do. I, I guess that would be my thing, because some people might be listening and thinking, well, Spencer Steer, okay, even MJ Melendez, you know, or a guy like Mikel Garcia, you know, okay, well, they're mid-breakout. How am I supposed to get them now? Everyone knows they're good. No, not necessarily, because you, especially you look at guys like Melendez, but, you know, the, Steer has that weird vibe to him. Spencer Steer, it's actually a cool name, but you look at his face. You know, scouts talk about baseball face. He almost has like this, like, he's just like this average guy. He doesn't look like anything. He just yep. looks like a baseball playing guy. He's like 5'11", 185, 180. Yeah, he's just like this sturdy, like, he's, you know, he's a sturdy, like Thomas Sagacy has the same build, 5'11", 185. And they just do everything kind of good. Like, no, they do everything just good enough. And right now he's turning just good enough into like pretty good. And someone said to me on Twitter the other day, or uh, it was like a, it wasn't even a hateful reply, but they said, "What are you looking at?" Will Benson is just on fire today. Double, yeah, uh, three runs, two, one, one, one run scores. Grant Ashcraft has a five run lead. Oh um, baby, baby. Anyways, someone said to you on Twitter. Yeah, they said on the Twitter on the X. They said, uh, you know, yeah, he's great. They're trying to be nice. They're like, yeah, he's great. You know, he'll never be a stud, but you know, he's good. He's, he's really good. I'm like. I thought, I said, and I said, yeah, I agreed, like instinctively. I thought about it, and I was like, wait, why can't he be a stud? <laughs> Just like assuming this guy who was giving us, like, in his rookie season last year, gave us like an excellent year. Um, you know, why can't he just like make a couple improvements or maybe the Reds get better or, you know, have a team that doesn't get hurt or suspended uh, all, you know, that would be great too. You know, this, these numbers could improve and all of a sudden, yeah, you got a stud. And I'm speaking of Cincy, yeah, well, I mean, might as well just leap on to Will Benson. This guy, he was starting off showing some promising signs um, and then kind of went down this, you know, he's been like, it's just so early that like everything, like three game, two, two games where you go over in a row. Oh, you're slumping, bro. Oh, you're slumping. You know, it's like, no. Uh, yeah, so he, well, yeah, he had two. Mm-hmm. When he homered off the lefty when I was in Arizona, that was, like, that was a huge moment for me because we've we talked about his terrible splits. And I mean, taking him dead center, I was like, okay, like that that answers a lot of questions for me. I know it's one singular outcome, but he came into the year, hit well. You said it hit a little bit of a slump, but it's like, yeah, we, we haven't even talked about Spencer Torkelson's little bit of a slump. It's like he's everyone's entitled to having a few games where they play poorly. And here he is today, mm. Monday, bouncing back, right? Guess what? Torkelson guess, home run? Guess, well, no, guess guess oh. what? Who who he's he just hit that he's two for two. Yep. Everything he's doing tonight is off of Aaron Ashby, who is a, a lefty. Let's lefty. go, Doc. Nice so, little plug there. Yeah. Aaron, I I do hope for Aaron Ashby to come back and, and perform well. That shoulder injury knocking him out for two years that's really rough. But hell, like the talking point here is Will Benson being able to hit lefties. Like if we can see him turn it around, we're talking about a massive a massive pickup mm-hmm. that you you can still have. He's still on waiver wires in a lot of my leagues because I think people are just like, uh, can we buy in? Can we not buy in? Like, Will Benson? Yes. Ah, interesting. He must be on my team in the other leagues. Yes. <laughs> Same. I, yes. I, won't, I, won't, I won't quit you, boy. Um, but, you know, let's, let's, let's jump from him to, like, I feel like if we were do, if we were in the 80s, we had to make a cop movie. Uh, you know, <laughs> two guys who were, like, similar but different. It'd be Will Benson and Parker Meadows. You know, these two yeah. six foot five, 2020 Strong kind kids. of guys. Yeah, it's like I, they're kind of like similar but different. Oh, <laughs> that's the name of the movie. Similar but different. so wait, who's Stra- who's brand name and who's generic Stra- name? I'm guessing Stra- Parker is generic name right now. Generic name? There's no generic. No, they they each bring their own thing to it. This okay, is, this would be this would be a straight to VHS video because it's got anyway. But the uh, <laughs> Parker Meadows has he's, actually been. He's not been doing very very good, has he? No, it's like uh, you know I saw some red flags. I, I bought into him with the red flags in mind. So the red flags are something anyone can see. If you go to see his minor league statistics last year, he's or a career actually, his career minor league numbers were 244 batting average and, and not too good of an OBP. And he kind of did the same thing in his MLB debut last year, 232, 331. 331 is actually a pretty solid OBP. I think it was both those numbers were declining as the year went on, though. Um, which you know, pitchers started kind of figuring out some ways to pitch to him. And this year, not not great, you know. Uh, 87, 0, 87 batting average, 276 OBP. Uh, not great, not great. And but you know he's but that that you want to look at what the team's doing. 
the team's not giving up on him. The team's been putting out him out there at leadoff, which I freaking love. That's ballsy. He's got AJ Hinch out there, right? Yeah. So the manager, uh, he's just doing a great job of showing confidence in his boys. He clearly there's talent there, and you know he's actually having an okay game tonight. Another, he's been okay. He's been getting, taking a walk here, a walk there. It's not like it's zero zero zeros everywhere. And it, finally, he's starting to steal bases. Now he's got stolen base tonight. That's two out of the last three games. Uh, frankly, that's a big reason why we're going for him. You know, we want that. That we would love to see some power ticking up. Yeah, Parker Meadows though, man. I mean, if he he's like he's like one three game hitless streak away from like, ooh, you gotta cut this guy. Yeah, and I don't know if you do. I don't know if you do because I still think there is talent there. Uh, I don't. I don't really feel like they're ready to demote him or anything yet. But yeah, it's been it's been a little tough. I think any Parker Meadows GM or owner would would agree with that statement. Yeah, and just a reminder, right? You talked about the excitement that we're seeing from Volpe this year. Just remember how bad it was at times last year. And mm. he also provided you incredible power and speed while having that issue of, do we cut him? Do we not cut him? Uh, Dynasty is a little deep. Dynasty is a little different, right? Because you're not cutting Volpe. But here we are a year later after he had a full season to develop, after he had a full season to get comfortable as the shortstop for the New York Yankees, leading the league in batting average. Uh, yeah. So you know, give these kids a little bit of time. Parker Meadows definitely, though, has not shown the track record of being able to be a 280 45 stolen base, 40 home run guy, right? He is not Ronald Acuna, but we have to give mm. him some time to kind of settle in. And I think that kind of transitions into our last bat too. One of wow. someone that we love, which is <laughs> VS2. Um, you have a strong opinion and I share it, but I want you to go ahead and, and kind of just tell us what you think of his early production, what you've seen and maybe what he needs. Victor Scott the second, the sequel, VS2. I gave him like multiple nicknames this this season and off season. Uh, I'm still a believer, and so are the Cardinals. This is kind of the same deal of watch what the team thinks, watch what they're doing. Not that the Cardinals or the Tigers are like models of what you should be doing uh, necessarily in recent years, but you know, I think Victor Scott, unfortunately, he skipped Double A or sorry Triple A, and he barely spent time at Double A. I think that's this is a bat that hasn't really shown tremendous strike. I don't think I know it hasn't shown tremendous strikeout issues at any level, really. And he's still not really like just like swinging and flinging and hacking and macking out there. I've been watching his games because uh, cause I was, you know, championing this guy so hard. I'm like, let me see. Does he look brutal out there? He's making some decent contact. He's hitting some deep balls, but they're, you know, they're going right to guys, um, you know, uh, it's like, yeah, I think he had guys on the corners or he had two men on. It was a really clutch spot just yesterday or two days ago. And like, dude, just, you know, try to find the spot, poke it through. But he kind of, I think he went for the fences and it was just like, it wasn't even warning track. It was kind of cringe. <laughs> so I was like, ah, oh, dude, you know, and maybe that's all he could get on that pitch. Maybe he's just not fully used to, you know, this pitching in the major leagues just yet, which is like, understandable, man. You can be a good hitter. Look, look at Dylan. Is Dylan, hey, is Dylan Cruz a bad hitter? Because Very Victor Scott's been hitting better than Dylan, Dylan Cruz. Uh, at the, if you put their, you know, their age levels, yep. you know, he's you know, his numbers are. I think Dylan Cruz will probably be a better overall hitter. I think his approach is completely different. The power is obviously completely different. You know, I'm, I'm not sitting here trying to compare the two in that sense, but just in terms of like now is not forever. Uh, and Victor Scott, I've, you know, it has played his defense is so good. I mean, he's been making crazy, like just every play he makes, like he's just flying all over the field. I don't feel nervous when I'm watching him. Like I know he's going to catch that ball. It makes it look easy. He has fun with it. And then he's on the base pass. When he is on base, he just manufactures runs. It is a glitch. And when it, he gets on base, when he starts hitting again, whether it, you know, Newt Bar's coming back as soon as tomorrow, I think it would be smart for them to demote him. I hate to say that. Um, but, you know, if they do that, I think we'll be seeing him back up here with more confidence and more seasoning, and he'll he'll be a fantasy asset. So if you can afford to stash him in redraft leagues, and obviously you're stashing him in dynasty leagues, don't worry, the best is yet to come. Yeah, and I think you said it, Nude Bar coming back. The only way for Victor to have been able to keep this job was to come out and really provide both offensive and defensive uh, positive war. And we knew when he was sent down originally to AAA that that was probably the best for his profile to allow him to, to develop a little bit more to really kind of get confident with those approach changes, that increase in pull side power that we saw in the Arizona Fall League. And then boom, you have the injury and it's like, hey, you're sprung right into action. So I think getting sent down is probably the best for him. 
being able to come back up and having that confidence rejuvenation, like being able to have seen what he needs to work on at AAA, all of those things will play into a better VS2 profile when we see him again. Uh, a couple more names here. I have two names that I put on the list today, and I want to know uh, they're kind of whatever names, but I want to know who you like the most. Like if you need to roster a utility player or an outfielder, which one you're taking. That's uh, Taylor Ward and Connor Joe, both off to really nice starts and have had streaks in their careers where they're usable and above average. Who do you like the most? I mean, prob- probably Ward. Yeah. I, I don't really – these aren't my guys. It's so funny, right? Like I, I, Some people, yeah, they'll go back to this well. I, w- I mean, last year, Taylor Ward lost his job to Mickey Moniak. Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, and, and uh, bad was, injuries, was he bang- right? Was he banged up? Yeah, it's it's been – that's been a career, though. It's Every year there's something that's like, oh, well, he had that injury, you know? Yeah, I'm just I'm, t- I'm taking a look at right now at Ward's profile. Yeah, so he didn't really have a great spring. He's I, I'm an OBP supremacist, so I hate that his, his OBP is still not fantastic. He's got a one to ten walk to strikeout ratio. He's batting. If you're in a batting average league, go with Ward. Let me take a look. So I'm, I like that we're seeing some power here, of course, and that's that was my initial. You know, one in doubt, go with the guy who I. If I was two guys, I'm not really too into in terms of adding uh take, give me the guy with a little bit more power a little bit more pop that's why i went with ward so let me do my diligence Connor here. joe is like a... your type of player though 35 at bats so? 11 hits 11 runs a stolen base a 442 on base percentage 314 average only a home run and a stolen base but like 11 runs dude that's a he's been scoring that's why he's on the list um, it's not Mike. This is a Ross Jensen player. It's a Ross Jensen player. Uh, we should yeah. change his name to Wade Meckler. You know, get the get yes. the, the Wade Meckler hype going. Well, yeah, the on base at... percentage though, right? The four forty two is nice, but you, you, I guess you're saying you want more power or speed attached to that. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna light a cigar right into my microphone because you know the listeners love that kind of thing. And <laughs> so I do love the approach though, because you, you're not you're not gonna stay in the big leagues long. Uh, just worth noting, by the way, I checked it again. Victor Scott has started every single game this season, including tonight. They're still starting him, and they have other guys. They can, they can give him a rest if they want. Um, but no, so Con- uh, Connor Joe, most human beings who are not elite defenders, they are, you know, they're not going to be able to stick around long in the lineup if they're not getting on base or, or getting hits. So Connor Joe is doing that, and so that, I love that in the player. But yeah, I mean, eleven home runs last year with five. Uh, uh, was that three stolen bases? Damn, there's no juice. And for the Pirates too. If you put that, if you put that in in a good, really solid line, you put him on the Rangers or the Dodgers. Oh yeah, like now we're talking, you know. But he's not. Well, and maybe the Pirates keep it up. But for transparency, I'm um I'm only rostering Connor Joe in a couple leagues where I'm like, I don't tank. I won't tank. I will put together the best roster I can. But let's just say if there's a team that you think is tanking, it's definitely this team where I'm starting Connor Joe. <laughs> and and I have him on the list because I think. While we may not be excited about the profile and the numbers that he's really showing, I think teams in desperation and deep, deep leagues are going to want this type of player, right? Like where you've got a really solid floor, he's not going to hurt your OBP, he's not going to hurt your average, he's going to get you some runs. So like you're already a couple categories deep, even if it's Roto, you might be able to turn a Connor Joe into a top 150 prospect if someone's desperate. And those are the type of moves, even with a Taylor Ward, Take them. If you're not in a position to win and you can get a guy that can be a starter down the road for you or an asset, my belief is go ahead and accept that deal immediately. You'll figure out whoever else is on the waiver wire. But Joe is the type of guy, there is no waiver wire. So you know he's the last last man of defense, really, out of these two names. Um, Doc, before we wrap up, we've got a few pitchers. We've got Reed Detmers, Frankie Montez, Kyle uh, Mueller, and uh, Abner Uribe. I kind of just tossed them on the list today just because they've they've really helped my teams. Uh, they've really kind of kept me alive. Detmer's big performance this past Sunday. Montez on a double start this week against Milwaukee and Chicago White Sox. That is a must start, at least for me. And then uh, Kyle Muller, 10 innings, 10 and a third innings, 9Ks with a 1.74 ERA for Oakland. All guys I like didn't have high expectations for. Detmer's maybe a little different, but um, who do you like out of this group of four? Yeah, I mean it's very interesting. Let's see, yeah, I th- I think Detmers jumps out to mm-hmm. me. Uh, he's just had those like stretches in the past, and he's still pretty young. Traded for him, 
in our 30 man my freaking rotation there is filthy it's like my fifth best pitcher or something like or sixth sixth best pitcher best pitcher um but no you want Reed Detmers if you can keep it going you know the, the Angels need some guys like that to <laughs> keep the fans in the stands and and keep and, and and play well and they're playing well right now uh relatively speaking so uh, that's great and you know I first, it's so funny, my instinct, maybe a lot of people hear Kyle Miller and, and they're thinking, right? Because they remember last year's tear. Like he was the opening day starter yeah. for the Oakland A's last year. And it was a meme. Like, dude, it was, I was like, this is embarrassing as a franchise. And yeah, he kind of just like, but here's the thing. As, as, I, as I started thinking about him, I haven't even looked like, you know, I haven't even dug into his uh, numbers this year. I heard you saying them, so I kind of stopped. Do we remember that he was actually a top prospect with the Braves? Yeah. Yep. This is the this is the A's curse, right? Oh, you're with the Braves a little, and some struggles happen, like you know, AJ Smith's uh, Shaver. It's like, oh no, he'll he's it's good. It's okay. Like, we'll send him down, and he'll Braves. be back. <laughs> with Mueller, though, it's like, oh, dude, I don't know. I don't think these guys can fix. This you. guy's got to work at Walmart. He's no good. Get him out of here. Yeah. So hey, great to see. You know, great to see. And and I'm not an Oakland A's fan. I don't really care about Oakland that much. Sorry, guys. But I, here's the thing. Like, I like to preface things like that. Like when I say, like, I'm not the biggest Cruz fan, but I respect him. And I and this and same here. I'm not a huge Oakland fan, but I respect the history of the franchise there. And I respect and I feel bad for the fans who have to go through this torture that they're going through. So, hey, hopefully these players can kind of be scrappy underdogs and maybe they can, you know, not pro- demote exciting electric players anymore that'd be great you know hey if Mueller keeps this up he's gonna find himself back in triple a he's gotta get that era <laughs> way way up give that in the five or six range again or else he's gonna find his way next to Estuary yeah Williams. they're there yeah they come out to vegas because that's where the triple a team is i'll just be able to watch other major league talent um mm-hmm. yeah no i'm making these like atrocious faces because i went to your 30 man and i'm i'm just frustrated that you have eight solid starting pitchers while i'm out here starting uh Xavier Curry, Michael Grove, Lynn Richardson, and Ryan Weathers. That's my rotation while you have Reagans, uh, you know, Yamamoto, Yamamoto. Flaherty, and I'm Ferios. like, all of those now, would be like seventh. my best pitcher without question, and they're on your bench. So <laughs> I got Scherzer on the way. <laughs> yeah, great. I am fantastic. Yeah. I need to make hey, more Hey, dude, trades. if you can get me, develop a single useful bat and i will send you one of these guys for him because dude nicky lopez are... come on it's, it's stud i repeat a single <laughs> honestly though like honestly nicky lopez like i might need to like i might send you something for dude him. i'm like, telling you like i so I put together these ragtag greasy little guys because i'm like in these in these leagues that i've come into to take over teams you're stuck with some garbage and you mm-hmm. nailed your your re, your rebuild we're going to cover that actually in a couple of weeks we're going to go over yeah. as as we get into more of the dynasty um content we're going to go into cold some... emerson on that team is so sexy and I uh I, I, I gotta stop eldridge like, yeah. eldridge too i mean they're it's, all there yeah, they're it's all disgusting. there um all right doc we, we're at an hour we did go with time is there anything else we need to cover before we uh say goodbye for the day <sighs> I don't know, man. Sick like my Sunday smoke. Did I say anything in my Sunday smoke? It was really, yeah. I'll just like say one quick hitter about a little, <laughs> little shotgun blast for Graham Pauly, dude. What a disgrace! I, like if you if you if you told me like, not too long ago that VS2 and Graham Pauly, I'd be rooting for these guys to go back to AAA. It's like it's a weird situation, but Padres, what are you doing? Give this guy playing time. I saw a Yahoo blurb, you know. They're like, oh, you know, if he doesn't start hitting better, then they're then he's gonna have a hard time cracking the lineup. Like, what do you, he does not in the lineup. Like, he's got one fifty four average in like, you know, seven at bats. One of those was a home run. Uh, no, so give him the playing time to develop or don't. Um, VS two, it's like I almost feel like okay, even if he's giving you great defense, I don't know if he's learning how to bat up here. Maybe he is. Uh, and then yeah, my other thing I would say is honestly, guys, maybe I, I zig where everyone else is zagging. So I think a lot of people are getting terrified of, of pitchers. Frankly, you might be able to capitalize right now if you send out, you know, specifically if you have a luxury, if you have really good bats, try to send like a mid tier, like a medium skilled bat for a medium skilled pitcher or maybe a little above that, like an above, like, you know, a notch above. Try to do like a deal where someone is just trying, like they're scared with their, maybe they have pitching depth. 
and they're just like, oh my gosh, everything, they're dropping like flies. Cause there's two ways they're going to think about it for me. Like, you know, I'm like, oh, I don't know if I can afford to trade anyone. Cause I'm just assuming they're going to get hurt, <laughs> you know? So I got to have backup, but the other people might just be like, oh dude, I'd rather have the bat, especially in a dynasty format. It's like, I'd rather have the bat. So I honestly, I might zig and uh, you know where other one else is zagging. Maybe consider trading for a pitcher right now and getting discounts on some great talent. I don't know if that's going to work out for you, but <laughs> it's like I'm I, I'm considering doing that myself. Yeah, and I and I think even some of the names we just talked about the uh, Taylor Wards, the Connor Joes, uh, Bryce Terrain comes to mind with a lot of steals to start the year. Like if you can shop some of these guys that you know maybe starters on teams or great you, you know, bench pieces for a volume starter. Graham Ashcraft is a name that comes to mind, right? Like. One of, if you can uh, swap out one of those guys for a Graham Ashcraft, for a Nestor Cortez, where right now it's just volume, but you're like, hey, um, as Bryce Terang just hits a home run. Um, <laughs> there we go. Great timing, Bryce, right off Ashcraft. But again, targeting oh, volume. Really? Yep. Darn. Off oh, Ashcraft. Well. Uh, targeting volume. I think that's the biggest thing you can do right now is just put together quality arms and you know move some of these pieces that you've either, either been able to pick up or draft late. And, you know, again, to your point, get VS2 down. I want to see, I want to see more of an approach for him, a more of an ability. Uh, he does look overmatched, but doc, that's all I've got. We've got an eight to two game is Cincinnati up on Milwaukee. Hopefully Ashcraft gets the victory. Anything you want to close us out with? Yeah, I got that Graham Ashcraft, Miles Mikolas stack in one, one league tonight. And honestly, when you start those guys, you feel like ballsy, you feel better. Like, I'm just like, let's do it. Mikolesh to the friggin' Harper and the Phillies. Let's go. I'm, <laughs> I'm tougher than you are. And so far, it's been okay. Now, man, I'm good. I think this is a, it's been a great podcast. I'm feeling good. You know, it's, it's too bad. You know, I like doing this earlier slot. I'm feeling more energized at the end. But, you know, we'll we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll try to bring this momentum into next week, folks. And I, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude, I'm on TV. We didn't talk about this. Yeah. Gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shoot yourself. With it. Yeah. All right. So, folks. <laughs> Go to hey, so go to uh, INSP, INSP, the YouTube channel. I play a guy named Bill Hamilton. He's a real frontiersman. I do some acting on the side of my lucrative fantasy baseball career, and uh, you know, I play I play this mountain man for this Western channel, basically. Into the Into the Wild Frontier is the name of the show. I've been tweeting about it. Scott White retweeted me for that show for some reason which is nice. He still won't follow me, but he like talks to me all the time. I don't get it. Come on, guy. Anyway, he's not listening to this. <laughs> but, yeah. He might be. Yeah, he might be. He and might Scott, be. appreciate the retweet because a lot of people saw that uh, trailer. Anyway, go check out my show. It's on YouTube. The full episode's free. It was on like this cable boomer channel, but you know nobody watches cable anymore, so they put it on the internet too. Check it out. That's all for me. What do you got to say, Matt? What are you feeling? Yeah, I mean, if you have any trouble uh, finding it, go to Doc's Twitter. It is... Def, you reposted it, right? You reposted it with the YouTube link because that's yeah, how I found it. I should probably like tw- I should probably pin it. I'm not, I think I'll do like one more one more tweet about it next week and then pin that. Pin for that, a bit. yeah. And yeah. I want to say it's season four, episode three, right? Yeah, buddy. My number one Rem- fan. Remind remind us again the name. What what character are you playing? Bill Hamilton. Bill Hamilton. The okay. Bill Hamilton episode of Into the Wild Frontier on INSP. Yeah, I'm gonna check it out. I watched uh, watched the first minutes before we jumped on tonight when we were doing our notes, and I and I love the production work. I thought that they shot it really well. Like, I'm excited to watch it. You know, 40 minutes is is not that much time for a lot of us, right? We'd be watching that or watching baseball, but definitely or cool for listening you. Listening to a terrible podcast with a couple of yeah, bums. listen to us yeah. talk a little bit. You know, or if you're watching us, I just hell I give you a lot of credit. You're really you're really dedicated. Um, but that'll wrap us for today. The next couple of weeks, we're going to get into more of the dynasty aspect. Like I talked about, we're going to talk about uh, some building concepts, how Doc has built a couple teams, and then we'll have more data. More data is key for us to really start digging into some of the minor league uh, points and, and talking points. So that's all for me today. Uh, thank you so much, you guys. Doc, it was awesome. Anything else? I'm your Huckleberry. We'll see you next Tuesday. Take care.